last marathon. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I am uh, going to try to be as flexible as possible. I know some of you have agendas and uh, need to move, but this guy here is an incredible friend. I mean, I feel since he's here that I kidnapped him. You know, because, but he, he got kidnapped, but he wasn't kicking and screaming trying to get out. So it seemed to be an all right kidnap. But John is a man who has decided he wants to give kids an opportunity to imagine a world that corresponds to their passion and their dreams. His school has been so successful just 10 years time that now there are his green schools popping up all around the world. We may not have the time to really do the discussion about how we go from a green school to a blue university. Maybe that's going to be on the agenda next year instead. But what we need to do is the green school concept needs to have its continuum into a blue university. We need to continue inspiring people, just like the masters and the grandmasters, you can't stop that inspiration exercise because school is ended. You need to continue that. And so I would just want to leave that with your inspiration, that what you've heard and you will hear today about the green school, next year we're going to expand to the blue university. Okay? And, and, and I, may, I may interject, you know, uh, you know I'm, I, I used to do that. But are you trying to switch off I'm my... I'm trying to get in your shadow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the pretty, laws of physics make that difficult. It's pretty intimidating being on the stage with the king of kings. But, and he told me five minutes ago I'm doing a talk, so here we go. I am from a tiny village in Cannington, Ontario, Canada. A thousand souls on a good day if nobody died. Here I am with my grandfather. He gave me my first job as a delivery boy in the general store when I was six. I got five dollars a week. In 1975, I escaped from Canada. I ended up in another tiny place, the island of Bali, a paradise. There I found an intact culture celebrating the fight between good and evil in amazing rituals. I've been walking around my whole life under the hole in the sky where the ideas fall down. And that made me a crazy person with too many ideas until I met the love of my life, Cynthia. Together we built an amazing jewelry business and we exited in 2000 and seven, and we were planning to retire. Then the love of my life completely ruined my life by taking me to the movies. This guy, every time we have a climate event, I blame him. The movie changed my life forever. It made me realize what we've done to the planet, and I need to spend the rest of my life mitigating the damage I'd done. We have four kids, and we decided to act. We built a school to prepare for an uncertain future. Meet Green School, seven kilometers of bamboo, giant bamboo. It serves as a beacon for people with educational dreams. This is the bridge to the school, the greenest school on earth, powered by the sun and the river. The school sits in Balinese rice fields and food gardens. This is not child labor, this is child learning. It starts at pre-K and goes to grade 12. The classrooms are like no, ever, no other. They have no walls. When you take kids out of the educational box, they thrive. Children at Green School are happy, and this creates an incredible environment for growth. We thought it would take generations to make green leaders. We were absolutely long, wrong. When you, take, when you give children a voice, they lead. I want to show you some examples. Finn and Dali found themselves studying in a local Indian school. They returned two years later and found many of their friends were missing. They discovered that they were married in factories or simply gone because the Indian government doesn't provide school uniforms to girls after grade eight. They went to their mother and asked for money to buy their friends school uniforms. 
so they could come back to school. Mommy said, why don't you do something and earn money to buy the school uniforms? So they started NALU as, as students at Green School. It's now a thriving clothing business. The proceeds go toward tens of thousands of school uniforms. This is a typical Green School cause, built and run by students. But what happened next, when they stood on the stage at the Ink Conference in India, they declared they would never make another t-shirt. They dropped them on the ground. They were working for Monsanto, unless it was completely organic. They went from helping Indian kids to starting an organic movement. Another green school student, Leander, was inspired to make his friend, who had no hand, a prosthetic one. Hands of Hope was born supplying 3D printed bionic limbs to the underserved around the world. Look what happens when you take kids out of the box. Kids audited the impact of their trips to school. They decided to launch a bus program. In typical green school fashion, they rejected diesel fuel. All five buses are powered by used cooking oil collected by the kids from local restaurants. This is the BioBus team today. Parents, students, teachers acting together to make a difference. One of the Indonesian kids who founded the BioBus program, of course, had a dream, probably his parents' dream, of going to university. And the university he chose had 25 kids lined up for every chair, all with perfect grades. When the, when the university discovered the biobus story, they moved him to the front of the line. I'll, vis I'll visit him soon. He's attending Cornell in America. Sisters Malati and Isabel were inspired by their class about Mahatma Gandhi. The beach in front of their house was covered with plastic, and they decided to make a difference. In kid fashion, they founded Bye Bye Plastic Bags. The mission was to ban plastic bags in Bali. They knew the governor could do this, and after multiple refusals to see him, they decided to follow Gandhi and declare a hunger strike in green school. When the government saw this on social media, he sent the secret police to the school. Hungry strikes are absolutely forbidden in Indonesia. They escorted the girls to his office. The girls were quite nervous about the prospect, this is Indonesia, about deportation or incarceration. But somehow they charmed the governor into joining their cause. Just last month, after five years of struggle, the governor of Bali has banned single-use plastic bags, styrofoam, and straws. When I go to New York, I explain this to them, that in Bali we've already banned them, but New York is coming. Bye Bye Plastic Bags has gone global, is now in 28 locations around the world, led by young people. After they, their TED talk, they got a message from Harvard. It said, see you here, which is the dream of all parents, that Harvard will, will give you a scholarship. There were in grade eight and nine at the time. Malati has now graduated from green school, and she's too busy changing the world to go to Harvard. <laughs> 231 appearances later, including twice at the UN, the IMF, the World Bank, all over the world. They were also voted by CNN, Forbes, and Time magazine as some of the most influential teenagers in the world. There is also something very big, which I can't talk about, coming out of Sweden. Malati and Isabel are green school heroes, and they inspire us as founders, and they inspire everyone in the school. A group of students went to COP22 in Morocco. They were turned away for being under 18. So this is what they did. I'm 17. 14. 18. 16. 15. 13. 16. 17. 18. 12. US. France. Indonesia. Taiwan. 
USA. Philippines. Ireland. Australia. Hawaii. Hungary. The UN COP22 Green Zone should allow all ages all access. Climate and environment is everyone's issue. We are the future. We are here with you now. We want to learn. We want to participate. We want to help. We want to cooperate. We want to be a part of change. We are the children. We are the youth. We are the people. And we are capable. We have the right to be included in the decisions that are being made. We are hoping that the regulation to exclude all people under the age of 18 at the COP22 Green Zone is a mistake and will be reversed. This civil space must be open to all people this year and every year. Please check out the link and sign our petition if you believe in all ages, all access at the COP22 in Kandesh. All ages, all access. All ages, all access. All ages, all access. Living green school students, you can't stop them. They made this at the door of COP. They all got in. It was so great. A simple Canadian named Tim watched my TED talk and he brought his kids to green school, but he decided in his Canadian way that we weren't doing enough. With $200, he started an after school program for local kids called Cool Cool Connection. This is the eighth year, and the students pay their tuition with plastic trash that we recycle. We have 300 kids now enrolled. Three Cool Cool Connections last year participated in our grade, our grade eight um, Quest Talks, and they all won scholarships and are attending green school full time. 75% of green school parents moved to Bali to allow their children to go to green school. It's not a boarding school. They are from 40 countries, and we encourage these amazing people to participate in the school. We have become a community of learners. The best example of this are the parents who have gone back to their home countries and are helping us build the next green schools, New Zealand, South Africa, and Tulum. This is Mohammed. He's not a green school student, but he was an intern at green school. He was committed to reducing plastic waste in temple offerings. He won a trip to New York his first time out of the country. He addressed the UN. Our scholarship pro program is completely supported by ticket sales from our campus tour. Last year, 12,000 people from all over the world visited Green School. That means that 50 local kids benefit from scholarships at Green School. Bunky Moon came. His wife insisted that he visit a school. He brought 1,000 troops with him to make sure he had a good visit. Sylvia Earle, Queen of the Oceans, came to tell about, talk about the ocean. Jane Goodall, the activist queen of the chimpanzees, empowered the kids, empowered all of us with this speech about our personal differences, our personal choices can make a difference to the planet. Our tiny school has become the epicenter of global green education. School is a legacy, I'm done. Oh, the kids. It's always hard when you have kids because you become responsible for their legacy. Alora, my firstborn daughter, founder of Vibuku, has become the preeminent leader of global bamboo building revolution. She's built 80 buildings and counting. It started as a dream to surround the green school with homes that would become a green village. This is one of the houses on the side of the river, completely built of bamboo. It was built for a family with four children in the school. It doesn't just look good, it feels good. The interior is a place you want to be. Waking up in a bamboo house changes everything forever. Come and try it. My son Oren once said to me, Dad, why didn't you make me study something that would lead to a job? I replied, Oren, it's not about getting a job, it's about creating jobs that make the world a better place. Or and his wife, Maria, have turned a degraded piece of land near Green School into the amazing Cool Cool Farm. They are farmer educators. They run courses in permaculture. They also run a farm stand at the Green School. And the big thing they're doing is called Bamboo U, not blue, but U. 
and it's a holistic bamboo building course. Number three, graduated from Barnard College, had been convinced by the powers that be that she must follow the herd and get a regular job. During a time at college, her time at college, she started a cause called Back to the Breast and has now founded a jewelry business called Elpin. That's nipple spelled backwards, and it's dedicated to raising breast awareness. Kara, our youngest, during her time in New York City, founded a cause called Matriarchy Now. She produces organic cotton t-shirts, often to the dismay of the patriarchy. The legacy's in place. I could retire at last. <sighs> <laughs> so I find myself with a spear in a bag, doing daily trash walks, cleaning up my neighborhood. Thousands of people have turned up to what has become a 7 a.m. moving morning meeting, walking, spearing, and talking trash. You all know we have a big trash problem. The Green School's youngest student, my grandson Nyan, I really hope what we've started will create a more certain, certain future for him. I mean, why doesn't your country have a green school yet? <laughs> Tell me, what's holding you back? You know, the most important is that this can be done. It was done, it is done, it will be done. You know, thegreenschool.org, check the website. Go and take the time to visit the place. I mean, it'll change your vision of education. It'll change your vision on inspiration. And you will not get one, but you had to make a tough selection of four or five examples of the kids. It is hundreds of examples there coming out of one school. And they're not saying no and striking. They're going and doing. And I think that is the new culture that we are requiring. The doing. Because if we're not doing, you know, we're wasting everyone's time. I am so proud to be so in tune with this conference and in tune with this man. Thank you. And and the concert is at 11.15, in nine minutes. So I would like to call on stage a young lady who's been so quiet all around us. And in the spirit, I want you to stand with us here. Here with us. Come on. How come you've been hiding all the time? I mean, this is... This is the greatest secret you have kept, uh, you know, in this uh, Zermatt meeting. Do you have a microphone? Shall we get your microphone? There is one. Okay. Who are you? Um, I'm Julia from Myanmar. Yes. And, and, and why did you come? Um, I hope and believe that like Foundation, they invite me. So that just now, um, I listen to many things really inspire me as a young leader to carry for the next generation. May, may I ask you, how old are you? I'm 28. 28. But you still like to go to school? Yes, and also I want to create. Okay. Maybe you could become a teacher there. Yeah, if I have a chance. <laughs> you know, I'm a fixer. You know, tell us what you're doing. So, yeah, what I'm doing is like now I'm empowering the women. It's like young people and women. Because nowadays in my country, many young people want to work in the big community because Myanmar is a developing country. But actually, they are destroying the, our environment. So, I would like to create something different for the people and poor. Because in my country nowadays, the climate change, I remember the first day the speaker said like, climate change is not the problem. The problem is the business model. Because the poor people are struggle to earn money. But without knowing, we are contributing to destroying the earth. I would like to organize for you to go to the Green School 
And I would like you to spend Shh. some time with the kids there. Sure. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm yeah. So We're going to organize that. <laughs> Dumb deal. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and, I, and I want you to come and tell that story as a teacher. Actually, I'm also trained the young people to the YLDC, which is Youth Leadership and Development Center, uh, found by the Foundation. I teach Foundation where? Foundation. Ah, Foundation. Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> so I also train the young people on uh, income generating project, focusing on the sustainable development and business. So unfortunately, I'm brought here, but I'm forgetting the hotel. Our young people also made, but our country is stay poor, so. Our technology is not like this, but what but, we but, but can do... But bamboo is not big technology, yeah. it's nature's technology. Yeah. So we also did the, you know, recycle, upcycling product. It's like uh, creating the new things from the old things. Yes. So And I'm Myanmar has beautiful bamboo. Yeah. Exactly. Big. Yeah, we call it, I don't know, okay. <laughs> wow. I mean, I, I, I just don't understand why she hasn't been on stage the first day. You know, so, so when, you go, when are you going back? Mm -hmm. When are you going back? Uh, 19th of September from France. And then back in Myanmar? Yes. Okay, so can you still come this year to Bali? This is or is it next year? Next year. Oh, <laughs> too busy, too busy, you know, no, no chance. This is, is my first um, social business. Actually, I have struggling with this like since 2017, especially because I would like to uh, provide a good opportunity for the women and the young people. And also, I also want to give the opportunity for the young men, because this is mostly for them. So I see that I'm a lot of, I don't know how to say, there are many inspire me for the men and then for the women. So it's a really great opportunity if I can go there. At the same time, I want to implement to become a sustainable. If I leave now, I'm not sure how to sustain. So maybe next year is more. Perfect. Yeah. We will plan. I, yeah. Great. I'm, I'm going to Myanmar for my 70th birthday, November 28th. I'll be there. Really? Welcome to Myanmar. Yeah. And I'll come find you. Sure, I'm I can. Younger. I can help you with color. Yes, and I love the Indonesia party as well. I, I, is this natural color? Yes. Then, like they use. Okay, there's the color. It is with the natural color, but when you wash, it can come out the color, but the color, not change. I mean. Not change. And and the inside is that natural? Inside is our color. <laughs> we don't bring the cushion. Ah, so you have to go and <laughs> buy it from the Swiss. <laughs> There are many you can buy easy. Swiss uh -oh. duck feathers. Okay, great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the spirit that Zermatt is all about, right? Celebrate young people, young people in age, and young people at heart. And all of us here, we have a young heart. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving this opportunity. Wow, I, I'm sorry, you know, I, I'll pay the ticket, you know, if uh, Screen School gets, uh, goes bankrupt, you know, I want to honor this. <laughs> Spending my money, good. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we want to respect, we want to create a bit of more space for the, for the musicians to come in. I have two little things. We're launching two programs. One is a contest for greenest, school, greenest teachers in the world. We have a green educator program, the people that win will be brought to Bali to go to the Green Educator Program. We're also starting a search for greenest students in the world. So those two things will be launched before Christmas and I will um, be expecting participation. Oh, a lot of it, of course. Did, did anyone have an urgent question to John? Is there any of such schools in Europe? Is there a green school in Europe? I, my understanding is, and it's very limited, and I don't have a European partner, but my understanding is that the prisons are more liberal than the schools in Europe. <laughs> prisons are more, that, that's not an answer to the question, but um, may I just suggest that, is anyone interested in creating a green school in Europe? In America? Yes. 
Awesome. In Europe, no one? Oh, yeah, the, the one, two. I mean, and, and let's make it an as crazy looking school as you saw there. I mean, I've been there, I've, I've I had with kids. I mean, kids just. Phew. The only secret of making a green school is making it local, but it has to be green. Because we found it's very clear that we can't teach green in an unsustainable box. So it can't be a box and it has to be green. Those are the only rules. And may I make an additional side comment? If John was not happy with the comment, he may spank me, but that's okay. Amazingly, when you put a school somewhere and the school has 500 kids, what happens to the land value? goes through the sky. It is value of land <coughs> determined by great education. Now, this is something that we need to talk about again and again and again. What's the business model? Now, the business model of the school, it's a great real estate operation. You know, that's what most people didn't get. And I believe that is where we need to find the models and the mechanisms. And, and you know, Javier, again, you, you're working on a school. We may have to put it in El Hierro. So people have to make an effort to go there, just like people have to make an effort to go to Bali. But you know, it's very important. This is not just a school, it is also a smart real estate operation. We have a green village at Green School. It only has 20 homes to date, but we're building more. The kids can walk to school, the parents commute to wherever they go. This is the best model. <laughs>